In today's math lesson, we're going to be working on telling time to the closest five minutes. Before we have any specifics about telling time, you'll be able to tell what kind of clock you're telling time off of. There are two different types of clocks, the analog clock and the digital clock. Analog clock has hands or arms, like the one that is in my hand. There are two hands or two arms that go along around the clock that tell the time. The first hand that we're going to talk about is the hour hand. The hour hand is the small hand, and on this clock it is red. As you can see, compared to the blue hand is bigger than the red hand on this clock. So the red hand is going to be our hour hand for today. And on the minute hand, the minute hand is the blue hand, as you can see, is the longer hand. This tells the minutes. The red hand tells you what hour it is. The blue hand tells you how many minutes past that hour it is. Um, the red hand is smaller because you don't need to, as, uh, need to know as precise hour it is. As long as it's in between any two numbers, you know, you're able to tell what number it is. The minute hand is longer so you can tell exactly how many minutes past the hour it is. How many minutes past the hour it is. The second type of clock that we're going to talk about is a digital clock. And a picture of the digital clock will put, uh, jump up on a slide in just a second. The digital clock does the same thing as an analog clock, except it does it without hands. It tells time with numbers rather than the hands. So the way that we write time when we're reading it off of a clock or off of an analog clock is exactly how it comes up on a digital clock. And on the digital clock, there are colons that separate the hours and the minutes. So that's how you're able to distinguish between where you write the time is at, you know, is on one side and the left side is where you write the hours and on the right side is the minutes. When you're writing the time down from either an analog clock or, you know, we look at it on a digital clock, the hours and the minutes are separated from a colon. The colon is just two dots that separate the hour hand, or excuse me, the hours and the minutes. Now, today we're going to focus on telling time on an analog clock. You know, telling time on an analog clock, as we already went over, is a lot different than telling time on a digital clock, since the digital clock tells you the hours and the minutes in numbers. Now, in this one, we're going to have to go through telling time on an analog clock. We're going to have to go through a couple of steps before we can tell the time. The first step I want you, uh, we should be doing is looking at the hour hand first. The hour hand is the small hand. So we need to look at and see where the hour hand is pointing. In on our clock here, the red hand is the hour hand, and it's pointing to a little bit past the four. Now, since it's a little bit past the four, it's still four o'clock. Anytime that an hour or the hour hand is pointing in between two numbers, in this case, in between the four and the five, if it's not all the way on that number yet, then it's going to be the previous hour. So it's in between them. Previous hour is four. It is four o'clock first. And we have we write the hour and we separate it with a colon that separates the hours and the minutes. Now our now this is where the tricky part is telling you how many minutes some or how many minutes past the hour it is. And in this case, we want to skip count by fives using these big hour numbers to help us skip count. Now when we're skip counting, we're not going by say one, two, three, four, five, we're gonna skip count by fives and say five, ten. I want to stop on the two because the blue hand or the minute hand is pointing to the two. So we skip count by fives and that tells us how many minutes is, how many minutes past four o'clock is. So in this case it is four ten. Now looking at this clock again, if we're going to tell the time again, now this is one where it gets a little bit trickier. If we look at the hour hand, it looks like it's very, very close to the five, but if you look extremely close, it's not there yet. So if it's in between the four and the five, we need to go ahead and look at the previous hour. The previous hour is four again. Now, 
I need to start at the 12 and skip count by fives all the way around and I want to stop at the nine. I want to stop at the nine because the blue hand or the minute hand is pointing to the nine. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So it is 445. Now, as, now, the trick is, as the minute hand gets further, gets further and further around the 12, in this case at the 9, the closer it gets to the 12, the closer our hand is going to get to the 5. So, if the minute hand is not there yet, it's not 5 o'clock yet. Alright, so you still have to go to the previous hour. Once it hits to the 12, it is now, the next hour, it is now 5 o'clock now. It's now hour 5. And I don't need to skip count anywhere because the 12 stands for zero minutes. One of the things that we can also do using our analog clock after tell, you know, besides telling time to, you know, telling time, is telling the lapse time or how long it's going to be in a certain amount of time. On our clock here, it matches what is on the board. Two hour hand first, between two and three, two o'clock. Minute hand of three, which stands for five, 10, 15, 15 minutes. Now, if I want to know what time it's going to be in 20 minutes, usually when we skip count by fives to tell what time it is, we're always going to start at the 12 and skip count to wherever the minute hand is, in this case, the 15. But to tell what time it's going to be in a certain amount of minutes, say, for example, 20 minutes, I want to start where that minute hand is. And right now, the minute hand is on the three. Now, I'm going to skip count by fives to I get to 20 and see where it stops. So I get 5, 10, 15, 20. Now I can see where it would be, what time it would be in 20 minutes. My hour is still in between the 2 and the 3, so anytime it's in between two numbers, it goes to the previous number, 2, call and separate the hours and the minutes. And I go ahead and look at the minute hand now. And the minute hand is pointing to the 7, which stands for 35. To double check that, I can go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Now, if I want to know how much, what time it's going to be in, instead of 20 minutes, well, say 4 hours, the hour hand did not change on this one because it, my, I did not go across the 12 with the minute hand, so it did not change hours. If I want to know what time it's going to be in 4 hours, the only hand that will move is the hour hand, and the minutes stay the same. So I can go ahead and write down the 35 again because I know that the minutes is not going to change. So now if I look at see where the minute hand is and it's on the 2, I can use a quick basic addition fact to tell me what hour it's going to be. It's 2 o'clock now, and in plus 4 hours, so I can do 2 plus 4 equals 6, which would be 635. I can go ahead and turn it around until it moves 4 hours to match that time. 2, 3, 4. And it would be 635. So, uh, important facts for, uh, important information for us to remember when telling time is to skip count by fives to tell how many minutes and to check out the hour hand first. The hour hand is the small hand the minute hand is the big hand.